Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So tell me if this kind of thing has ever happened to you. I was at a large name brand store, purchased my daughter her birthday present, which is a really nice satchel for her computer, or computer bag. Anyways, I paid for it and I was walking out and the alarms went off. So I pull back in and I look at the guy and he's like, no, it's okay, just go. I'm like, are you sure? Nope, it's okay, just go. So I get home and I'm looking at the bag and I go to open it and you can't open it because there's a metal wire attached to a little alarm. So I start to panic because she's coming over after I finish making this video. And I just wanted to surprise her with this. Anyways, I call the store back, which literally took me about 45 minutes of uh, waiting on hold for somebody to answer. And they're not that busy. I was just there, believe me. Anyways, finally, someone answers the phone and I told them that there was this alarm tag still on the product that the gentleman didn't take off. What should I do? She says, well, you're going to have to come back to the store. I said, no, I'm not coming back to the store because I'm working. And she said, well, hang on a minute. Then she comes back on. She said, just cut it off. I said, are you sure? And she's like, yeah, nothing will happen. I'm thinking that's not a very good deterrent because it wouldn't take a thief very long to realize that they're just there for show. Anyway, so I get my wire cutters and I proceed to cut it. And then all of a sudden, the alarm goes off and it was loud. So I tried calling the store to ask what I could do about it. And of course, nobody answered. But after 15 minutes, the alarm finally petered out. So, guys, save yourself a lot of trouble and investigate when the security alarms go off at the door. All right, enough of the jibber-jabber. Let's get on with this really good story. Hey, Leslie, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I want to thank you for all the encounters that you read and for making my nights interesting. Wow, you're quite welcome. I grew up in Northeast Georgia. I currently live in Florida, where my Bigfoot experience started. But I'll get to that in a minute. For as long as I can remember, and for the entirety of living in the house that I grew up in, I had many experiences, not with Bigfoot, but the spiritual world. I spent most of my young childhood and into my teens living in a constant state of fear. I was terrified of the house I grew up in, and I quickly learned to keep everything to myself because nobody ever believed me. I laid in bed many nights, too scared to fall asleep, mostly because of the hand shadows on my wall. They were not mine as my hands were under the covers. My closet door would always open and close, open and close. My mom got so upset with me, always being so scared, that she changed the knob on my closet door to where you had to have a key to unlock it. And she would always assure me every night that it was locked and show me that it was locked, but to no avail. And the damn door would always open. I would always get woken up in the middle of the night with all the hair on my body sticking up and too terrified to breathe. I would try to run to my mom's room, but was held down by an unseen force that I begged to let me go. I would be laying on the bed wide awake and there would be something that would push my mattress from underneath where it would make me actually come off my mattress. I would refuse to sleep and my mama 
had eventually bought me a bed with drawers underneath, and that finally stopped. When my sister went to middle school, my bus got home an hour earlier than hers did, and I just couldn't go inside and be alone. As much as I hate to admit this, there were several times that I peed myself because I was absolutely terrified of going inside. Like I physically couldn't be in that house alone. I could go on and on and on about my experiences in that house, but I don't like to talk about it much. I'm 36 years old, and I'm still terrified of the dark. And when my husband and I bought our home, the first thing I did was remove every single closet door that we had, and I got rid of them. I still take showers with the curtains wide open, or I'll go into a state of panic and I can't breathe. Thankfully, the experiences stopped when we moved out of that house, but the damage is everlasting. I still sleep with most of the lights on in the house, and I avoid mirrors like the plague. Fast forward to about three years ago, and I was randomly watching something about Bigfoot, and instantly I was obsessed. I found any and every encounter story channel because I couldn't get enough. I started hiking in the woods, and it was there my beliefs in Bigfoot were confirmed. I've seen big feet prints in random spots, broken trees that were snapped. They're symbols they make to mark their paths or territories. My husband and I, our two kids, were kayaking Ginny Springs, and we stopped on a random bank to take a break and eat lunch. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching us, and I kept checking my surroundings and couldn't see anything. So I took out my phone and started taking pictures, and eventually we got back in the kayaks and went our way. It wasn't until later that day I did go back through my photos, and as clear as day, there were three of them. Fast forward to a couple of days later, on the same vacation, we were coming back from Horseshoe Beach. We drive for miles in the middle of nowhere with no cell service, to get there. And I happened to be driving while my husband was facing the back seat talking to our boys. And about 60 yards in front of me, this massive, and I mean massive, entity ran across the road. And I knew it was a Bigfoot. It ran so fast, it was so huge, that I can describe the hair it had on its body. Of course, I yelled to my family to look, but he had already made it to the other side and into the woods. I stopped my vehicle where I saw it, and I got out of the car and I looked around for it, but it was long gone by then. My husband believes me because I was so hyped up with adrenaline that I couldn't get the words out of my mouth, and I was in pure shock and awe at what had just happened. It was so validating and special to me that I haven't told anybody about it. Why would I? Nobody would believe me. I told my husband that it was God giving me a glimpse to prove that, yes, they are in fact real. I know this may sound crazy, but I daydream of what it would be like to know some Bigfoot. My favorite encounter stories are those where people have built a relationship with them and coexisted with them for many years. If I ever run into a Bigfoot, I hope it's this kind. But thank you for letting me share my story, and I look forward to hearing more encounters. Sincerely, Jessica from Florida. You know, as I read your story, Jessica, I got this really strong feeling that one day you will get that. You will have that connection. If you were into Bigfoot about 10 years back, you might remember that there was a lot of emphasis put on Bigfoot, that they were very spiritual, and it was called the woo. Um, 
A lot of people believed that they had this ability to read our minds. So, you know what? Let's just say that that was real. So, the more that you project those feelings and you put it out there in the universe, I think you just never know. You may just get what you're asking for. So don't give up hope. Put out the positive feelings and keep watching these videos. And let me know if you ever have that dream come true. Because I hope you do. Well, guys, I think that's going to be it for this evening. I know it was just a short one. But I'll try to make it up to you on the next one. Okay, guys, don't forget, please hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, and subscribe. And of course, you know I love ya. We'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.